Hello everyone, Assalamualaikum and a very good day. So you are here with me today, okay, for part 6 of JKE 316E, Quantitative Economics. So the topic that we'll be discussing today uh, is uh, called ANOVA, which stood for Analysis of Variance or Analysis of Variations. Before we go further, let's recap what we did before in terms of hypothesis testing, in terms of regression and correlations, Okay, where you already come across the different type of uh, hypothesis testing and the fast type of hypothesis testing, and then you have already come across the F statistic and all that. Okay, if you look at the slide on screen right now, okay, this is actually taken from the website of uh, phdcomics.com. So this is actually a play of words. So instead of talking about ANOVA, we stood for analysis of variance or analysis of variations. So this uh, slide is talking about ANOVA as analysis of value. So instead of talking about hash naught or your null hypothesis, so now it's become the DAO hypothesis. So it's basically referring to the same thing. It's just that uh, the creator of this slide is uh, being sarcastic okay, about this uh, hypothesis testing about ANOVA okay, and the whole story. And then you also have the F test okay, instead of F statistic equals to a formula so you have on the right hand side of the screen f apostrophe d okay if you are native english speaker so you know what that word stand for okay the short forms okay and the formula is variation of the actual formula but it still makes sense okay so this slide basically tells you how does whatever that we did before in terms of hypothesis testing okay we're still uh, covering it now in terms of the five steps in terms of null hypothesis, in terms of alternative hypothesis, and then you still have okay the risk of making either type one or type two error. So you need to be careful of that whenever you are involved in hypothesis testing, okay. And then okay in the earlier parts when we do regression, you uh, come across F statistic, okay, which also uh, will become uh, will be found okay in the current topic of ANOVA. So basically, uh, the question is asking you know whether your research whatever that you are researching is worth anything so as usual the dull hypothesis which is referring to the null hypothesis is always statement of equality and your alternative hypothesis uh, in terms of your statement mu1 or mu2 that is what actually you are researching okay so this is an interesting if it doesn't make sense to you now okay don't worry we come back to this slide at the end of today's Session. Okay, for this topic of ANOVA, our main reference okay, and resource that I'm using is still based on Keller 2012 Managerial Statistics, the 9th edition, which is produced by Southwestern Sengage Learning. While the slide that I'm using uh, mostly uh, sourced from uh, Keller 2009, okay, the 8th edition, okay, and copyright as usual belongs to uh, Sengage Learning. Uh, as for the other sources that uh, I use in terms of the comics, in terms of tables okay so i put the sources on the slide as uh, we come to that okay let's talk about what is anova now okay what is uh, this thing that we call as analysis of variance okay so analysis of variance or in short okay commonly called as uh, commonly known as anova is just a technique that allow you to compare two or more populations of interval data okay so that's why okay when we discuss regressions so regression is basically to regress so that you can come out okay with uh, an equations to uh, to explain the relationship between two variables but what if you have more than two variables then you need to go to multiple regressions what if we are talking about interval data two or more populations of interval data then you have ANOVA or analysis of variance okay so basically ANOVA is uh, extremely powerful and it's widely used and this is a procedure which determines whether a difference or the uh, differences exist between populations means okay so what we'll be doing is uh, to work by analyzing sample variance so you take the word analysis of variance so you already know what is variance this is from the first chapter that we do in terms of measure of uh, dispersion variance and standard deviations before we go further I'm going to start with one way analysis of variance so let's go through the descriptive parts, okay, what we are actually doing. Okay, so let's assume that you are taking independent sample, okay, which is drawn from a K populations. Okay, K population, that means the number of population. K can be 12, K can be anything, any figure. So if you have population 1 on the left-hand side of the screen, 
So population one, if uh, we'll be having parameter of mu one and variance, okay, one. And then from there, you can take the sample for population one from population one that will give you a statistic of x bar one and uh, s uh, variance s uh, s squared for one with sample size for one. Okay, the same thing you do for populations two. Okay, and then you also have the, the next population up to population number k, which will give you a mean for x bar for k and variance for k with sample size k. Okay, so these population are being referred to as treatments. Okay, what does treatment mean? It's just that the analysis of variance started back in 1920s. Okay, it was applied to uh, analysis of the different type of uh, fertilizer. Okay, that, that means the different treatment of fertilizer, whether it, uh, it gives to the different uh, crop or uh, yield of crops. Okay, so that's why the, the word they'll be using is treatments. But basically what we're having is just something like different groups or different populations. So it is not a requirement that the sample size for each of these population or uh, each of these treatments to be the same. So you can have N1 equals to 10, N2 equals to 50, N3 equals to 100 and so on and so forth. Okay, let's look at a few uh, new termino terminology that uh, we are going to use for ANOVA. So here, okay, X, okay, instead of being your variable of interest now, okay, it's still variable of interest, but X is what is known as response variable. And its value are responses. So XIJ is referring to the I number of observation in the J number of sample. Okay, so X35 is not X35 but X35. Okay, subscribe uh, 35. That means the third observation of this fifth sample, what is the value that is noted as X. And then we have the, the new uh, terminology, specifically we have grand mean. Okay, grand mean is X bar with an extra bar so you have x double bar there okay so grand mean or x double bar is the mean of all observation okay so if you look at the formula the one below okay so what you have is you have a certain size uh, of sample which is made up of the different group or different population one up to population number k okay so you need to calculate okay some each and every uh, all item or respond in each group and add them up okay and divide by the total group number of items so that will give you the grand mean okay x double bar another terminology that we'll be using is what we call as factor what is a factor so a factor is simply a population classification criterion while each population is known as a factor level Okay, now we are going to look at a basic ANOVA situations. So let's say we start with a simple case, okay, in the case of two variables only. One of the variables is a categorical variable, while another variable is what we know as a quantitative variable. So the main question that you need to be asking yourself now is, does the means, uh, okay, of the quantitative variables depend on which group, okay, which is given by the categorical variable that the individual is in? Okay, so in this case, if the categorical variable has only two values, as usual, what you can do, okay, you can use a two-sample, okay, t-test, either for equal variance or unequal variance, or it can be a match pair t-test. But however, ANOVA will allow you to test for three or more groups. Okay, in short, if somebody is asking you what is ANOVA, ANOVA is simply to test hypotheses of two or more populations means. Basically, we have three types of ANOVA. Okay, the one that I'll be discussing in detail is what is uh, called a one-way ANOVA. And then we have a randomized block, or that's another, we, uh, another name for two-way ANOVA. And the third type of ANOVA is what we already covered uh, in earlier part, which is uh, under the discussion on regression model. Okay, now we are going to look at the four steps of ANOVA, or analysis of variance. Bear in mind, okay, the first step of ANOVA is not something that you need to uh, memorize or remember in detail, okay, such as in uh, fast type of hypothesis testing. Okay, this one is just explaining the, the stages, okay, for you in doing the analysis of variance. Okay, the first step, okay, what you need to do is to, uh, to actually estimate the population variance between the sample mean. So, this is what we call later as mean square of uh, treatment or mean square for treatment MST. 
okay and then the second step this is where you estimate population variance in the mean sample so this is known as mean square for error mse in the third step of ANOVA this is where you can calculate your F statistic or your F ratio okay your F ratio is made out of mean square for treatments or mean square for the groups divided by mean square for error or MSE and the final step step 4 okay you make your decision you reject your null hypothesis if the F statistic that you calculated is greater than your F from the table Okay, whatever that I explained just now, okay, can be put into a nice table such as the one shown on screen. So, okay, so what you see on screen are the different components of one-way ANOVA. Okay, let's look at the first column on the left-hand side of the screen. So, the first column is explaining the sources or the source of variations. Okay, so the source of variation can come from the different treatment or the different groups just now. Okay. So that is the uh, later, okay, you will come out with sum of square for treatment. So that's known as SST, okay, the third column, okay, for sum of square for treatment, okay, we use the symbol SST, okay, and in terms of the fourth column, mean square, okay, where do you get mean square? By taking your SST divided by your degree of freedom. Degree of freedom for the first uh for the treatments, okay, or for the group is uh, basically K minus 1. So remember what is K? K is the number of treatments or the number of group or the number of population that you have just now. Okay, and the second source of variation is what is known as the in-between uh, variation. Okay, the treatment just now is the between uh, groups or between uh, population uh, variations. So the second type or the second source of variation, okay, come from the error or uh, this is what is known as the in-group, okay, variation, okay. So the degree of freedom because in each in each group you have the sample size n, okay, and then you need to deduct with the number of group that you have k that will give you the degree of freedom for the error source of variations, okay. And then when you you need to calculate the sum of square column, okay, this is sum of square for the error. Okay, and then for the mean square column, okay, you need to calculate MSE. Okay, what is MSE? You simply take your sum of square for error, divide by degree of freedom for error. Okay, and the uh, last column on the, your right hand side, what you have is the F ratio or the F statistic. So F statistic is simply made out of MST, the mean square for treatment or mean square for the groups. Okay, divide by the mean square for error. Okay, so the last column, the last row, okay, the, the source of variations total, okay, is just simply uh, adding up the two row above it. So when it comes to the second column, degree of freedom, so if you want to calculate the total degree of freedom, so if you have k minus 1 plus n minus k, so basically what you have is the k offset each other, so you have the total degree of freedom is simply n minus 1. Okay, same thing for sum of square. Okay, sum of square for total, SST total is made out of sum of square for treatment and then sum of square for error. Okay, I won't be discussing the two-way ANOVA in details but I'm going to explain a little bit, okay, what are the components of randomized block, okay, in the case of two-way ANOVA. It's similar to what we discussed in one-way ANOVA except that, except that now we have uh, a little bit of addition, okay, in the middle. So your sum of square total, your SST is made out of sum of square for the treatments, okay, the between groups plus sum of square for the blocks, okay, what is blocks, okay, I'll explain to you after this and add up to that sum of square for error. So when it comes to two-way ANOVA, okay, the one in red is simply what differentiate two-way ANOVA with one-way ANOVA. One-way ANOVA, sum of square total is simply made out of sum of square for treatment plus sum of square for error. So bear in mind, okay, you need to be able, okay, to uh, to differentiate. Please do not get confused. Sum of square for total and sum of square for treatment, okay. Most of the time, I use SST for treatment instead of total. We can put the different component of randomized block in a table similar like a one-way ANOVA. So in the case of two-way ANOVA, your sources of variations, okay, your source of variation on the left hand side of the screen is being made up of the treatments, blocks, and error. 
Okay, and the total is uh, the uh, the addition of all three treatments block and error. So degree of freedom. So you have k minus one. Okay, similar as before. Okay, is the number of group or the number of treatments. Okay, that you have. Okay, and then the blocks. Okay, it b b minus one. That is the degree of freedom. So error. Okay, degree of freedom is given as m minus k minus b plus one. Okay. As for the sum of square column. So sum of square for treatment is SST. Sum of square for blocks, okay. Sum of square for error, and then you have sum of square for total. So I use uh, the word total instead of t there, okay. And in the fourth column, the mean square, okay, for treatment you have the MST. How you get MST? You take whatever that you have in the sum of square column for treatments. You divide by degree of freedom. Same thing for mean of square for blocks. You take whatever that you calculate in sum of square for blocks. Divide by the degree of freedom. Similarly, you do that for mean square for error. So when it comes to the F statistic, instead of having one F value, now you have two F value. So the first F uh, statistic value is where you take the ratio of uh, mean square for treatment divide the mean square for error. This is similar to one way ANOVA, and then the the second formula, which is what differentiate two way ANOVA. Is F2, this is where you take the mean square for blocks, you divide by the mean square for error. Okay, to uh, explain the difference between one-way and two-way ANOVA in layman term, I'm going to discuss it in terms of a research into the different methods of dieting. Okay, in the case of one-way ANOVA, let's say you know that there are four different methods of dieting. So in this case, you're going to take four sam 14 samples. Okay, that means the first person, let's say the name is... Um, Anna, and then you have B for Bella and C for Chris and so on and so forth until your sample number 14. So that is your sample A up to sample uh, N person. So it's just that maybe for method 1, you have 3 person under group method 1 and then you have uh, 4 person, okay, D, E, F, G for the second method, okay. And then the third method, you have H, I, J and the fourth method, you have K, L, M, N. So it's not necessary to have the different method with the same sample size. Okay, so that is one way ANOVA to put it simply. In the case of two way ANOVA, okay, you still have 14 sample or 14 uh, respondent in your uh, research okay, uh, target groups. So in two way ANOVA, you still use the four different methods of dieting okay, that you are studying. But now, okay, the 14 respondent, you divide into three different age groups. Okay, so now you have those below 20 of age and then those between 20 to 40 of age, those above 40 of age. So the different age group now is what is known as blocks. Okay, so one way on over, the one on top, you do not have blocks. Okay, the individual is uh, just being uh, dispersed into the four different methods of dieting. While in the second way on the uh, while in the second type, okay, the two-way ANOVA, the 14 individual, okay, under the dif different method of dieting, they are also divided into the different age groups. That's uh, how we put it simply, the difference between one-way and two-way ANOVA. Okay, this is another example on the difference between one-way and two-way ANOVA that I'll pull from the internet. Okay, so on the left-hand side of the screen, you see a conceptualization of the two-way ANOVA. So you have factor B just now, okay, I explained to you, okay, factor B can be in terms of uh, four methods of dieting. So in this case, fa factor B is made out of B1 and B2. And then you have factor A. In earlier slide, we discussed the different age group. So now factor A is being made out of A1 and A2. So and then you have the actual data. So on the right hand side of the screen, you have example data. So factor B can be in terms of the kind of violence. Okay, here we are talking about uh, watching television for kids. Okay, this is a research into the effect of uh, watching television on uh, kids, okay, in terms of their behavior, in terms of their character perhaps. Okay, so in terms of watching the kind of violence, okay, whether it comes from cartoon or it may come from real action, okay, either is uh, now we have a lot of these uh, real stories or in terms of movies. Okay, so that is one factor. And the second factor can be in terms of time, whether it's a time minute uh, exposure, maybe from the advertisement, okay, short one, or it can be in terms of 30 minutes exposure in time. So that can be in terms of movie or in terms of uh, drama, okay, where you have an extended uh, viewing. 
So basically, okay, you have two different variables and then you have the data, okay, so that is uh, the two-way ANOVA. Okay, now let's move back to the case of one-way ANOVA. So I'm going to discuss with you a very simple ANOVA situation. Okay, bear in mind, this is one-way ANOVA. So let's say you have the subject that you're studying, 25 patients with blisters, okay? And you're going to give this patient different treatments, okay? You're going to give them treatments A, treatment B, and placebo. Treatment A and treatment B is like something like different kind of medicine or different kind of whatever treatment that you're giving to uh, those with blisters. While placebo is just simply doing nothing but you still need to take their measurements. Okay, for the placebo effect. So here you're going to measure them in terms of the number of days. The hash there on screen referring to the number. Okay, so the number of days until the blisters heals. Okay, so in this case, your actual data for treatment A. So you have the number of days taken until the blisters heals. Uh, the blisters heal in terms of 5 days, 6 days. There are 2 weeks, 6 days, 2 weeks, 7 days, 8 days, 9 days and 10 days. Okay, and the mean for this uh, treatment A is given as 7.25, so that is X bar A. And then you have for the second type of treatment, treatment B, you have uh, 2 with 7 days, uh, and then we have 8 days, 2 with 9 days, 2 with 10 days, and 11. And the mean for treatment B is 8.875. Okay, for the placebo effect, okay, for the placebo, that means no treatments. So, you have that basically they are taking longer, okay, for the blister to heal. So, those with 7 days, okay, 2 with 9 days, two, 3 with 10 days, 1 with 11 days, there are even, okay, 12 days and 13 days, okay, in order for the blisters to heal. And the mean for this placebo group, okay, is much higher, relatively higher at 10.11. Okay, so let's say you are a doctor faces with these uh, 25 patients who are being given these uh, three type of treatments. So the question that you need to be asking yourself now, okay, are these differences significant? So you want to know whether 7.25, okay, the mean for treatments A and 8.875 mean for treatment B and 10.11 for the placebo group, are they con considered to be more or less the same or are they very much different? That means treatment B, is it better from treatment A? Is it better or is it less? Or is it no good? Okay, so this is the question that you need to be asking. Okay, when it comes to the informal investigation of the case on hands, okay, we are going to look at whether the difference between the groups are significant or not, which will depend on, number one, the difference in the means, okay, and the, uh, the standard deviation of each group and the sample size. So ANOVA will determine the p-value from the F statistic. So we're going to look at next, okay, what does ANOVA do? Okay, at its simplest, okay, remember there are extension, okay, other than one-way ANOVA, we have two-way ANOVA and all that. Okay, so ANOVA will test the following hypothesis. Okay, don't be surprised, I tell you, okay, we'll be using a lot of this hypothesis testing. Okay, so we have your null hypothesis, your hash naught where the means of all the groups are equal, okay, that is the mathematical sentence, okay, you are saying that the means of all groups are equal or they are the same, while alternatively, or H1, not all the means are equal, that means if you are talking about the three treatment just now, maybe one of them, treatment A or maybe treatment B or maybe the placebo groups, okay, maybe one of them are different from the other. However, it does not say exactly how or which one differ. It's just that one of them is not the same with the others. Okay, so you can follow up okay, on this one with multiple comparison. Okay, uh, just now when I, we talk about the different treatments, okay, let's take note here. We usually refer to the subpopulations as group. It's not correct for me to use uh, K as number of population. So K is basically referred to the uh, number of treatments or the number of subpopulations when doing ANOVA. Okay, don't be surprised if you look at the assumptions of ANOVA. Okay, the assumptions of ANOVA number one, okay, we need to make sure that each group is approximately normal. Okay, so we are referring to normal distributions again. So you can check this by looking at histograms, okay, and or you can do the normal quantile plots or you can simply use assumption. Let's assume. Economists love to do that. Okay, and uh, another way for you is uh, if let's say you come across some non-normality, 
okay uh, it's also possible to approximate in, uh, into normal distributions but not in the case of severe outliers okay if you are doing actual research okay with data okay you need to handle this the case of outliers you need to take them out basically uh, the second assumptions of ANOVA is that the standard deviation of each group are approximately equal so the rule of thumb here is that the ratio of the largest to the smallest sample standard deviation must be less than two point uh, less than two to one let's look back at our data that we uh, discussed just now in the case of one way ANOVA so we are going to do the standard deviation check okay this is in the case of doing real research when you come to exam question basically okay you can skip this part okay uh, so you have the different treatments okay in terms of treatment a treatment b and the placebo and then you have the different sample size eight and eight for each of treatment a and b while the placebo group is uh, uh, consists of nine samples Okay, and the mean is also given, okay, the same as uh, what is stated earlier, the median, and now you have the standard deviations. Okay, so when you square the standard deviation, remember this will give you the variance. So the rule of thumb just now, you need to compare the largest and the smallest standard deviation between the subpopulations. So in this case, the largest standard deviation in the group of three treatments is 1.764, and the smallest standard deviation from the group of three is 1.458 so you take the smallest value multiply with two okay so but you what you get uh, what you see is that 2.916 is much greater than 1.764 uh, so the variance ratio of 4 to 1 is equivalent okay to uh, 2 to 1 just now because variance is simply square of standard deviation so this is acceptable I'm going to introduce to you some notation in the case of ANOVA now. Okay, so N is simply number of individuals all together. So that referring to the sample size, okay, per the subpopulations. L is the number of group. So in this case, uh, I think earlier I used the symbol K. Okay, X bar is mean for the entire data set. So in this case, basically X bar is actually referring to X double bar. Okay, the grand mean because it's referring to the entire set. So for each group or for each subpopulations, okay, so each group I, so you have the sample size NI, so the number of group in group I, the number of individual in group I, so XIJ is the value of individual J in group I, so X bar I is mean for that group I, while SI is standard deviation for group I. So nothing new here. Okay, it's just that now because we have the different sub-population or sub-groups, okay, so instead of talking about 1N or 2N, okay, and 1X bar, 2X bar, now you, we use a symbol IJ so that if you have more uh, like 10 or 100 groups, you can also use the same notation. Okay, uh, we are going to discuss how does ANOVA work, okay, so this is the outline. So ANOVA measures the two sources of variation in the data and compare their relative size. Okay, so analysis of variance, we are going to look at the source of variation in data. One comes from the different treatment or the different group or the different subpopulation, while another will come from within the group or within the treatments or within the subpopulations. So let's look at the first one, okay, variation between groups. Okay, so for each data value, we're going to look at the difference between its group means and the overall means. So you have x bar i minus x bar in bracket square. x bar i is referring to mean for one subgroup or one subpopulation or one treatment. While x bar is actually x double bar referring to the grand mean or mean of all items. Okay, you need to take the square because this is variance. Okay, so the symbol square it tells you variance. Okay, and then the second part of variation come from within group. So variation within group for each data value, you need to look at the difference between that value, okay, whatever that you observe for x and the mean of x in that groups. So in this case, x i j, okay, minus okay x i mean, okay x bar uh, mean for that x bar, okay, in that group, and you square because this is variance so in short what you need to remember is that the ANOVA F statistic okay the one that you are most interested when it comes to the hypothesis testing step 3 
Okay, so ANOVA statistic is just a ratio of the between group variations, okay, divided by the within group variations. Okay, between group variation is what is known as MST or mean square for treatment just now. Okay, now I'm going uh, to use the symbol MSG, mean square for groups or mean square for treatments or mean square for subpopulations. And then you have to divide this with the within group variation, mean square for error. Okay, so in this case, if you get a large value of F statistic, so this is evidence against H0. Okay, a large value of F is evidence against H0 since it indicates that there is more difference between group than within groups. Okay, it might, does, uh, it might not make uh, much sense now, but if you uh, discuss more in terms of example, if you read further, okay, it's very simple actually. Okay, what you see on the screen uh, right now is the different uh, type of software that produce ANOVA output. So the one on top is from Minitab and the one below is from R. Okay, both are still the same ANOVA table. Okay, so a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of different, but more or less it's the same. Okay, so in this case, okay, we are talking about the same example from one way ANOVA just now. We are talking about the different type of treatment, three different type of treatments, okay, in the, and how many days it takes for the blisters to heal. Okay, so we replace the actual value, okay, if you put, uh, if you put your data, into the computers, okay, you click this mini tab or R, okay, in the case of our textbook, okay, if you use the software that is being added on to the Excel, that is Data Analysis Plus, you can also produce the same table, okay, of ANOVA. So in this case, okay, so you have uh, the total uh, degree of freedom 24, which is being made out of degree of freedom for treatments 2, and degree of freedom from the error group, which is 22. And then sum of square for treatment 34.74 uh, and sum of square for the error is 59.26. Okay, you add up both, okay, that column you get 94. Okay, that is sum of square for total. If you look at the mean square column, okay, how you get 17.37, what you need to do is simply take 34.74, you divide by 2, so you get 17.37. Similarly, means of square for error, you take 59.26 divided by 22, so you get 2.69. Or in the case of R output, it's become 2.7. It's just rounded uh, figure to one decimal places. When it comes to the F statistic or the F ratio or the F value, what you need to do is simply take the uh, between group uh, mean square, which is 17.37 uh, divided by the within group uh, variation, which is mean square of error 2.69. Okay, you divide and you should be able to get 6.45. And the computer will usually produce the F uh, value uh, in terms of the probability. So in this case, you get P value of 0 0.006. So basically, you can reject HO or your H0. Okay, if you are wondering how does this uh, computation have been made, okay, the figure that you see in the table just now, which is produced by the software, either Minitab or R or the Data Analysis Plus, you can also calculate in the case of one-way ANOVA, simple uh, data, okay, manually. So in this case, you want to measure the amount of variation that is due to between group variations as well as within group variation. So for each data value, you can calculate its contributions to the between group variations. What's the formula? You take the mean for each group or the mean for each treatment. You deduct with the grand mean, okay, or X double bar, okay, or the mean for all total. And you take the square, okay, that will give you the between group variations. Okay, as for the within group variations, okay, you simply take each value of X in the group. Okay, deduct, okay, with uh, the mean of that group and then you take the square. That will give you the within group variations. In order to illustrate the manual calculation, I'm going to share with you an even smaller example. Okay, so suppose you have three groups. It's still one way on over, but now you have three groups, okay, and group one is made up of this value, 5.3, 6.0, 6.7. Group 2 is being made out of 5.5, 6.2, 6.4, 5.7. And group 3 is being made out of 3 items, 7.5, 7.2 and 7.9. 
Okay, if you are using the computer, you can put this data, put in this data and you're going to get the following statistic. Okay, so you have three item in group one, four item in group two and three item in group three. Okay, so that is the count. And the sum is simply you add up all three, 5.3 plus 6 plus 6.7 in group one, that add up to 18. Group 2, 5.5, 6.2, 6.4, 5.7, that will give you a sum total of 23.8. And group 3, you will get 22.6. So average is simply x bar for group 1, 18 divided by 3, you get 6. For group 2, 23.8 divided by 4, so you get roughly 5.95 there. Okay, x bar 2. As for x bar 3, you take 22.6 divided by 3, so you get x bar 3 equals to 7. Point. So variance for the group is given as uh, for the first group 0 0.49, for the second group 0.1767, for the third group 0.123. Okay, this is uh, the Excel uh, output for ANOVA using the data analysis plus. So this is your ANOVA table. So you have the source of variation for one way ANOVA between groups. So you have the sum of square for treatments of 5.127 and sum of square for the error or between groups okay by now you should be able to to use the term interchangeably so when we talk about source of variation for the treatments okay it's known as between group source of variation for error is known as within groups so we have ss uh, sum of square for error okay that is for within group equals to 1.75 so degree of freedom between groups, we have 2, okay, uh, within group, we have degree of freedom equals to 7, so total degree of freedom is 9, okay, mean of square for the treatment or for the group is 2.56, how do you get 2.56? You take 5.1 divided by 2, so you get 2.56, similarly, you take 1.75 divided by 7, so you should be able to get 0 0.25. So how do you calculate F value equals to 10.21? You simply take mean square for the treatment, 2.56, divided by mean square for the error or the within group, 0 0.25, so you get 10.25. So the, uh, the computer already produced the P value, so in this case, it's P is 0 0.008, so basically you can reject H0. Okay, the current slide is showing to you how to calculate uh, the value for the ANOVA tables okay, manually okay, without the use of computer. So you're going to start with your raw data, whatever observation that you have in the first column on the left hand, uh, left -hand side. Okay, so you have data for group 1, okay, start with 5.3 up to 6.7. For group 2 in the, second, uh, the first column, okay, you have 5.5 and then up to 5.7. Uh, Okay, and then you have group 3, you have the data value 7.5, 7.2, and 7.9. So the group mean is simply you add up, okay, whatever that you get just now. Okay, 5.3 plus 6 plus 6.7, okay, so you add all 3 divided by 3, you get group mean for 1, which is 6. So it's all the same for all 3 observations in 1. And then you add up the group mean for 2. So 5.5 plus 6.2 plus 6.4 plus 5.7. You add up, you divide by 4, that will give you 5.95. So the group mean for all observation in group 2 is the same. And similarly, you do for group 3. So you get mean of group 3, 5.7.53. Uh, so when it comes to the within group variation, so this is mean, uh, uh, mean square error. Okay, you're going to take the data. Okay, in the first column under the, the bigger column or within uh, group variations so you're going to take the different in the first uh, column okay you take the data minus the group mean okay so in this case uh, you take 5.3 minus 6 okay so the answer will be 5.3 minus 6 you get negative 0 0.7 okay if you take the square of 0 0.7 negative you lose out the negative so you get 0.49 okay so that is within group variation. Similarly, you do for the second observation in group 1. So you have 6 minus 6. Okay, that is the group mean. So you get a difference of 0. So you square 0, you get 0. And then you do the same thing for the third observation in group 1. 6.7 minus 6. So a difference of positive 0.7. 
So you take the square, it becomes positive 0.49. And you do the same step, okay, for group 2 and for group 3. And then at the end of that uh, column, okay, you can add up all the square difference, okay, for the within group variation. variation. So you are going to get a total of 1.757. Okay, for the between group variations, okay, you're going to take the difference between the group mean and the overall mean. So that means the grand means, okay, and compare with the group mean of 6 for the group 1, and the grand mean and compare with 5.95 for group 2, and grand means uh, compare with 7.53 for group 3. And then you take the square difference, okay, you add up, you should be able to get 5.106. Okay, so for each of these squared uh, within group variation and squared of uh, between group variation if you divide okay by the respective degree of freedom okay that will give you respectively 0 0.25 and 2.55 okay and you can put in in the table okay what you have uh, on screen right now is the mini tab output for ANOVA ANOVA table so you have the degree of freedom for the treatments okay equals to 2 this is actually one less than number of groups so remember you have three groups Okay, group 1, 2 and 3 So uh, 3 minus 1 So you have degree of freedom for treatments Okay, 2 And then you have the degree of freedom for error 22 and the total Okay, 2 plus 22 you get 24 Okay, how you calculate 24 This is 1 less than the number of individuals Okay, in the whole 3 group Okay, just like other situation So sum of square for treatments is 34.74 Sum of square for error which is 59.26 and you add up both you get sum of square for the total which is 94 mean of square for treatments okay you take 34.74 you di might divide by 2 you get 17.37 okay and then uh, mean of square for error you take 59.26 you divide by 22 so you get 2.69 so for the F ratio you simply take 17.37 okay you divide with 2.69 that will give you 6.45 and the computer also produced the p-value of uh, 0 0.006 so basically it's uh, significance okay you can reject your h naught. the same table that you seen earlier so i'm going to describe the data okay the, the, uh, the calculation in terms of formula so remember how do you calculate okay the uh, sum of uh, square for treatments okay you simply take each mean uh, gr uh, each group mean you deduct with the grand mean or the x double bar okay you take the square you add up so you should be able to get 34.74 as for the sum of square for error you take each value of x in the group you minus with the mean of that group and you take the square you add up so that will give you sum of square for error okay as for the uh, sum of square for total Okay, it's simply each x minus the grand mean. Okay, you take the square and then you add up all items. In terms of uh, the symbol that we are using, okay, just now I show you the formula or how to calculate. So the same minute outputs, okay, the mean square for treatments, okay, uh, and mean square of error is given a mean square of uh, group or treatments, okay, MSG or MST just now is given by SSG or SST divided by degree of freedom for that. Uh, degree of freedom for that treatment or that group okay dfg is not something new it's just degree of freedom for g okay similarly dfe is degree of freedom for e for error okay and then for the f ratio is being made out of the between group uh, variation or mean square for the groups or mean square for the treatments okay so i told you msg or mst the word g and t is more or less interchangeable Okay, and then you divide with uh, mean square for error. Okay, and the p-value is actually, uh, if this is uh, p-value available from the uh, uh, software, but if you doing manual calculation, you can read your F statistic, or uh, F value, okay, critical value from the table. You need to read F value with degree of freedom, the F uh, for G for the treatments, and degree of freedom for the error components. Now, the next question that you need to be asking yourself is that how big is F? Okay, so how big is F? Okay, so we know that F is the mean square between divided that uh, divided with mean square within or the between group variation divided by the within group variation or mean square for group or mean square for treatment divided by mean square for error. So in this case, a large value of F 
Okay, that means your numerator, okay, is higher. Indicates that relatively more different between group exists than the within group. So this is taken as evidence again, hash not. So to get the p-value, we can compare with the f distributions, okay, with uh, f l minus 1, okay, n minus 1, okay, where l minus 1 is the degree of freedom in the numerator, that is the number of group, or k minus 1 is actually, the number of group minus 1, while n minus 1 is the degree of freedom in the denumerator, that means the rest of the degree of freedom. Now we are going to look at the connections between sum of square for treatments and mean of square for treatments and the standard deviation. If you ignore the group for a moment and just compute the standard deviation of the entire data set, you are going to see that uh, standard deviation for the entire data set S square is being made up of the formula. Okay, you take each x value, okay, you deduct with the grand mean and you square and you add up and you divide by all observation minus 1. Okay. So that is actually, uh, in short, is being taken as sum of square for total divided by uh, degree of freedom for the total. That will give you the mean square for total. So SST is n minus 1 multiplied with S squared. Okay, so remember you get the formula SST just now. Okay, summation of xij minus uh, x double bar, okay, in bracket square. And then you have MST equals to S square. Okay. So that is SST and MST measure the total variation in the data set. As for connection between sum of square for error, mean of square for error, and standard deviations, okay, let's remember that standard deviation for each group, okay, SI uh, squared, uh, which is variance for group I, is being made out of each uh, variables in that group, SIJ minus mean of that group, Okay, you square, you add up, divide by the sample size of that group, minus 1. Okay, so this is also equals to sum of square within group I, divided by the degree of freedom for group I. So in this case, sum of square within group I is equals to uh, variance of group I multiplied with degree of freedom for group I. Okay, this means that we can compute sum of square for error from the standard deviation and sizes that is degree of freedom of each group. So you have SSE equals to sum of square within, okay, which is equals to sum of square within group I, which is equals to uh, variance of group I multiplied with the sample size of group I minus 1, okay, you add up. That will give you sum of uh, uh, variance of group I, okay, multiplied with degree of freedom for group I. Now we're going to look at the pool estimate for standard deviation. So one of the ANOVA assumptions is that all groups have the same standard deviation. So we can estimate this with weighted average. Okay, so variance uh, for pool estimate for standard deviations. Okay, instead of S, I'm going to use S square. Okay, P stands for pool. Okay, that means combined variance or combined standard deviations, which is equals to the sample size for group 1. Okay, N1 minus 1 multiply with variance for group 1. Okay, and then same thing, you add out with uh, sample size of group 2 minus 1, multiply with variance for group 2, okay, and so on and so forth, until the last group i, okay, n i minus 1, multiply with variance for i. So you divide all of these with n minus i, okay, the number of groups. So the pool uh, estimate for standard deviation, so in this case, pool estimate for variance, Okay, it's given as degree of freedom number 1, okay, sample number 1, multiply with variance number 1, plus degree of freedom number sample 2, multiply with variance 2, and so on and so forth. Okay, and the denumerator, the one below the formula, is simply add up all the degree of freedom for the different group, from group 1, group 2, up to group L. So the variance for the pool estimates is simply given sum of square error, divided by degree of freedom for error. This will give you the MSE. Okay, in summary, it looks that uh, you have come across too many formula, but remember, it's more or less, okay, the same variation of formula. It's just that you need to know which one that you're talking so that you do not get confused. If you look at the sum of square for tr uh, treatments, or uh, sum of square for total, okay, sorry, sum of square for total, okay, is uh, given as summation of all observation, 
xij minus the grand mean okay uh, you square and then you add up okay that will give you in terms of another formula variance square okay multiply with degree of freedom for the total dft okay capital because it refer to the total in the second line okay sum of square for error is given as each observation in the group minus the mean of that group x bar i okay x i j minus x bar i you take the square and then you add up all item okay this is equals to the variance for that group multiply with degree of freedom for that group i okay as for the sum of square for group or sum of square for treatment or sum of square for the sub population you need to take the group mean that means x bar i minus with the grand mean which is double x double bar okay you take the square you add up this is also equals to the uh, the sample size for each group and multiply with the difference between uh, x bar i minus the x double bar squared okay so that is the sum of square for the group or sum of square for the treatment how you uh, how you get sum of square for total you add up sum of square of error and sum of square for groups how you get the uh, mean uh, square okay you simply take the sum of square divided by degree of freedom how you get f value or f ratio you simply take mean of square for the group divided by mean of square for the error so that's the summary of what we did just now okay now do you still remember the r square statistic okay so r square give the percent of variance that is due to between group variations so by right the r square formula is equals to sum of square for between group okay over the sum of square for the total so this is in short ssg over sst okay and you already see r square when we study regression in part 5 we are going to look at uh, one example from chapter 14 this is uh, example 14.1 from the text okay uh, basically looking at the analysis of variance so what we have here is that in the last decade stock brokers have drastically changed the way they do business so it is now easier and cheaper to invest in the stock market than ever before so what are the effects of these changes so to help answer this question a financial analyst randomly sampled 366 american household and asked each of them to report the age of the heads of the household and the proportion of their financial assets that are invested in the stock market okay this is for those who are uh, who did take my uh, other paper which is money and banking so you learn all about the financial markets so this is not widely um, practiced in terms of individual financial portfolio but when we talk about the overseas uh, market okay everyone basically got some sort of financial portfolio investing in shares investing in stock investing in debentures and all that in example 14.1 the age category are divided into four so we have the young okay under 35 we have the early middle age okay 35 to 49 year old and then we have the late middle age in the third category which is 50 to 65 year old and then we have the senior which is uh, for those uh, who are over 65 year old okay the analyst was particularly interested in determining whether the ownership of stock varied by age so we're talking about whether a person okay the head of the household whether they invest in stock in shares and what are the amount of or the percentage of uh, stock ownership okay and then depend upon the age category so the question now is do this data allow the analyst to determine that there are differences in stock ownership between the four age group so in short the question is asking you is there any difference in stock ownership between the four age groups Okay, let's look at the terminology that is being used in this example 14.1. Okay, the percentage of total assets invested in the stock market, this is what is known as the response variable. While the actual percentages, okay, are the response in this particular example. While the population classification criterion is what we call as a factor. So the age category is the factor that we are interested in. So this is the only factor under consideration. We do not have other variable, for example, in terms of gender, in terms of their locality, whether it's rural states or urban states. So what we have is just age group. So hence the term one-way ANOVA or one-way analysis of variance. So each population is a factor level in this case. So in this example, there are four factor level. Okay, so we have the young, the early middle age, the late middle age, and the senior 
groups. Okay, remember in other world you are still doing a uh, kind of hypothesis testing. So let's identify, okay, in this case your null hypothesis. What is your null hypothesis? So your null hypothesis in this case should be okay mu1 equals to mu2 equals to mu3 equals to mu4. What does it mean? You are saying that basically there are no differences between the population mean among the four different age group. Alternatively, okay, your alternative hypothesis becomes okay, at least two means differ. You do you do not know which one, but uh, okay, it can be either uh, mu1 or mu2 or mu3 which is not equals to mu4 and vice versa okay so because of that you need to go to step 3 where you need some test statistics in step 3 where you need to calculate the test statistic okay you know that mu1 equals to mu2 equals to mu3 equals to mu4 okay this is the, the statistic of interest to you so a statistic that measure the proximity of the sample means okay remember mu is the population mean so basically what you have a data for the sample mean x bar okay so you are going to measure the proximity of the sample means to each other okay that would be your mean interest so such a statistic do exist and it is called the between treatment variations so remember we are talking about between treatments or this is also known as between group variations Okay, it is known as SST, which is short for sum of square for treatment or SSG sum of square for group. And this is uh, calculated, okay, uh, using a formula. Okay, you need to multiply, okay, your group mean X bar for, for that particular group J. Okay, deduct with the grand mean, okay, the uh, X double bar. Okay, square it and then multiply with the sample size for that groups okay and the summation of all group that will give you the sum of square for treatments and a large sst will indicate a large variation between sample mean which are going to support your alternative hypothesis okay uh, now we're going to look at the formula to calculate test statistic so remember when you perform the equal variance test for small sample okay in hypothesis testing in earlier part okay you already determine Okay, where the two mean differ in chapter 13 using the formula for T statistic. Okay, if you look at the formula, T is equals to, okay, the numerator x bar 1 minus x bar 2 divided by the denominator, okay, variance, okay, for the pool sample multiplied with the 1 over the sample size for 1, uh, the first sample plus 1 over the sample size uh, of the second one. Okay, you take the square root. And you have the formula for the pool variant is given as the degree of freedom for the first sample which is given by n1 minus 1 you need to multiply the variance for the first sample and then you uh, add to that okay the degree of freedom for the second sample which is n2 minus 1 multiply the variance for the second sample the numerator measures the difference between sample means while the denominator measures the variation in the samples what you have seen earlier is the formula for the t-test in the case of two means uh, populations for four, four population. So now let's look at the t uh, the test statistic for ANOVA. So remember the your SST your sum of square for treatment or sum of square for groups give you the between treatments variation. So remember we are talking about treatment is referring to groups. Okay. So SST give you the between treatments variation and a second statistic. Okay, the second row in the ANOVA table is what is known as SSE, sum of square for error, which is uh, which measure the within treatment variation or within group variation. So let's look back the formula for SSE. SSE is given by okay each value of uh, your variable, your x i j minus your uh, group means x by j. Okay, you take the square and then you multiply. Okay, you add up all of that. Okay, for that group and then you add up for the whole groups. Okay, so you can also change this formula for SSE as, okay, as seen earlier. Okay, you simply take SSE is equal to summation of the variance for each groups. Okay, multiply with the degree of freedom for each group and you add up for all the groups. Okay, that's how you read the formula. Okay, in the second formulation, the one that you see on the, your right hand side, Okay, it is easy to see that it provides a measure of the variation 
you can expect from the random variable that you are observing because okay if you look at the formula the variance for that group which is given by s square okay multiply with the degree of freedom which stood as the weightage okay in the next part when you need to compute the, your test statistic since you have your sum of square for treatment which is given as uh, your mean okay uh, for the group uh, deduct with the grand mean which is x bar j minus double x bar okay remember x bar j is referring to the mean for that treatment group okay while x double bar is the mean of all the groups okay you take the square you multiply with the sample size you add all of them so that will give you a sum of square for treatment or sum of square for uh, groups so if it were the case that x bar 1 equals to x bar 2 equals to x bar 3 equals to x bar 4 that means all the group means are equal or all the group means are the same then it stood that SST or sum of square treatment are zero remember what is SST just now it measure of the variance for each groups so in this case if variance among the groups add up equals to zero so that means your null hypothesis, okay, H0, which is equals to mu1, equals to mu2, equals to mu3, equals to mu4, it would be then supported. So more generally, a small value of sum of square of treatment, SST, will support the null hypothesis. While a large value of SST will support the alternative hypothesis. So the question now for you is you need to decide how large is large enough. Okay, when it comes to computation, what you need to do is simply plug in your data into the software and the computer will come up with the results, okay, or the output, not the results, okay. It's just the output which you need to uh, make sense into. So, what you have now is the, uh, the sample statistic and the grand mean that is computed, okay, using computer. So, you, you have X bar, sample mean for the first group, 44.4. X bar 2, you have 52.47. And then you have x bar 3, 51.14, x bar 4, which is 51.84, and the grand mean, which is the mean of all the sample mean, which is 50.18. The first uh, calculation that you need to do is to look for the sum of square for treatment or sum of square for group, SST. So the, this will stood for the between treatment variation. How are you going to calculate that? So remember the formula. You need to take the group mean, okay, x bar 1, for example, you deduct, okay, from that is the grand uh, mean or the uh, x double bar. And then you square and you multiply with the sample size, okay. And you do the same for the second uh, population groups and then the third groups or the third treatment and the fourth treatments. So, okay, in the first line there, you see the actual formula. Okay, and the second line, okay, you see that all the values have been uh, plugged in in terms of all the statistics from the sample that you get from your computer just now and the sample size, okay, and then you square, you multiply and then you add them up. So, what you have is your SST value, sum of square for treatments, okay, which is equals to 3741.4. So, we are looking at the next question now. SST equals to that 3741.4. Is that large enough? Okay, from your computer, okay, you can also calculate the sample variance respectively. So you have the sample variance for uh, the first group, which is uh, 386.55. You'll have the sample variance for the second group, 469.44. You have the sample variance for the third group, which is 461.82. And then you also have the sample variance uh, for the fourth uh, group, which is 444.79. Okay, in case you forget, okay, just remember that, okay, sample variance is simply made up of standard duration, uh, okay, you need to square. Okay, so S square is variance. So S without the square is standard deviation. So if you have standard deviation value for each of the group, you need to square it, then you have your uh, sample variance. And from this sample variance, you can calculate the within treatment variation, which stood for the sum of square for error, which is known as SSE. So the formula okay, is given as the degree of freedom for the first group, okay, which is the sample size minus 1, multiply with the variance for sample 1, 
Okay, and then you do the same thing for the second group. They give a freedom for the second group, which is equals to the sample size of the second group minus one multiply with the variance for the second group, and you do the same for the third group and the fourth group. Okay, and then you uh, multiply. Okay, after you multiply with the variance for each group. Okay, you and then you need to add them up. So what you have at the end, your sum of square four error, which is equals to one hundred sixty one thousand eight hundred seventy one. Okay, so you still need a couple more quantities in order for you to relate SST and SSE together in a meaningful way. Okay, now we are looking at the mean square. So remember in the ANOVA table, other than the sum of square column, you also have the column for mean sum of square. So in this case, the mean square for treatment, okay, is simply given by the formula for SST divided by K minus 1. So, K minus 1 is the denominator. Okay, the mean uh, of square for error, MSE, is given by sum of square for error divided by N minus K. So, this is from the ANOVA table. So, in that case, the, third, uh, the next column that you will look into is the test statistic. Okay, in the case of ANOVA, which is known as the F statistic. The formula for F is simply the ratio of MST over MSE. And we know that uh, F statistic is F uh, distributed with K minus 1 and N minus K degree of freedom. So now you are close to the final part. Okay, in this part of computation of the test statistic, we are still talking about example 14.1. So now you can calculate the mean square tri for treatments, okay, MST, and mean uh, of square for error, okay, using the formula MST equals to SST divided by K minus 1. Okay, so you should get 1,247.12 And then as for the mean of square for error The formula is SSE divided by N minus K So you should get 447.16 So when it comes to your F ratio or your F statistic What you need to do is simply take the ratio of MST over MSE You should be able to get F equals to 2.79 so the next question that you need to be asking yourself is that does this F value of 2.79 falls into a rejection region or not? So what is the P value? This is where you need to look at your F distribution and you need to do a little sketching. In order for you to interpret the F statistic that you already calculated earlier, okay, in this case, okay, you need to determine whether the value of SST, remember what is SST? Is to, for sum of square for treatment or sum of square for group. So you need to determine whether the value of SST is large enough to reject the null hypothesis. So if SST is large, so your F will be large. So in this case, your P value will be equals to the probability of the F that you calculate, your F, uh, okay, greater than your F statistic. Okay, the current slide that you see on the screen is just to show you the computation, okay, using, okay, add-in in Excel. Okay, once you plug in your data, okay, you click the correct uh, steps, okay, in order to compute your ANOVA. So, this is the output of your ANOVA, your analysis of variance. In, in this particular, particular case, we are talking about one-way ANOVA, we are talking about a single factor only. So you have the different groups, okay, you can see the first table, the summary in terms of, you have four groups in terms of young, early middle age, late middle age, as well as the senior. The count is basically the, um, the sample size for each group, okay, and then you have the average, the x bar, okay, and then you have the variance, which is basically the x square, okay. And then you have the table below, which is uh, the ANOVA table. So you have the source of variation which is divided into the between group or between treatments as well as the within group or within treatments. So and then you have the second column in the uh, in the table, ANOVA table, which stood for sum of square. And then you have the degree of freedom column. And then you have the mean square for uh, column for the between group as well as for the within groups. And then you have the F uh, statistic or F ratio column. And the computer will also came out with the result in terms of the p-value. So you do not need to look at your f uh, table or your f distributions table. You simply look at the p-value in this case because the, your p-value is small, less than 0 0.05. So basically you can say that you reject your hash naught.
So if you look at the interpretation of the ANOVA table, for example, 14.1, okay, in detail. So we know that the p-value just now is 0 0.0405, which is small. So we can reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. That means you're saying that H0 is wrong. Okay, what is right is the H1. So at least two population means are different. So in conclusion, okay, based on the result, so remember, you have your null hypothesis, okay, which is uh, shown earlier. You have the uh, the F uh, statistic uh, for the critical value. If you do not have that, then you need to refer to the P value from the table, okay, the output uh, that is produced by your computer. And then you have the test statistic, okay, for ANOVA table, okay, your F value, okay, then you make your decision by comparing your F statistic and F, okay, from the table, okay, so in this case, you can conclude that there is enough evidence because you reject H0, okay, or H0, so there is enough evidence to infer that the main percentages of assets invested in the stock market differ between the four H category. So basically, all five steps of hypothesis testing is completed. Okay, let's look at the ANOVA table again. Okay, so the calculation that I show you just now is a step-by-step -step outside the table. So if you plug in your data into the computers, okay, what you have is straight away your ANOVA table. So you need to do it manually in, for, in order for you to understand the steps, okay, in terms of how do they came up with the figures in ANOVA table. So remember, your source of variation is being made up of the treatments and the error. So you have the degree of freedom column, and then you have the sum of square column, and then you have the mean square column, which is simply uh, you take your sum of square divided by your degree of freedom that will give you your mean square column. And then the F statistic column is simply the ratio of mean square for treatment divided by the mean square for error. So this is the basic ANOVA table that you have to know uh, in details. Okay, now let's do some thinking. Why do we need ANOVA, okay, and why not, okay, we use the t-test for two means. Okay, so why do we need the analysis of variance again? Why do we not test, okay, every pair of means? So in this case, let's say you have six group. In earlier example, okay, uh, the, uh, the shareholders example, we have four groups, right? For each group. Now, let's, for example, you have K equals to 6. Then you have a combination, okay? See, uh, combination of two each, okay? For when you have six group, so eventually you end up with four different pairs of mean as shown on the slides. So in this case, if you were doing the t-test for two means, you need to test each pair with uh, the, the level of significance alpha equals to 0 0.5. So in this case, you will increase the probability of making type 1 error. If there are no differences, then probability of making at least one okay, type 1 error is given by uh, 1 minus 0 0.5 to the power of 14 that uh, deduct okay, to the uh, 1, point, uh, 1 minus uh, 0.95 to the power of 14, so you have your probability of making at least okay one type uh, one error 0.537 is which is very high indeed. So instead of we limit the probability at 0 0.05. Okay, when you are doing your F test, okay, you need to check the required conditions. Okay, the F test of the analysis of variance requires that the random variable be normally distributed with equal variance. So this is the assumptions of ANOVA and uh, or analysis of variance. Okay, the random table must be normally distributed with equal variance. This normality requirement is easily checked graphically by producing the histogram for each sample. So we have done, okay, this uh, histogram in the earlier part, okay, of the chapters. And if you look at the equality of variance, Okay, you can examine this by printing the sample standard deviation or the sample variance. The similarity of sample variance allow you to assume that the population variance are equal. In case there is a violation of the required conditions, for example, if your data are not normally distributed, so you can replace the one-way analysis of variance with its non-parametric counterpart, which is what we call as uh, Kruskal-Wallis test. So this is in section 
if the population variants are unequal then you can use several methods to correct the problem however this is beyond the syllabus okay whatever that we are discussing for now okay let's recap what we've done so far in terms of ANOVA in terms of analysis of variants okay so when it comes to ANOVA you need to identify that uh, am I comparing two or more populations here okay if you are only comparing two population, okay, then it's possible for you to use the t-test for the two population means or, uh, okay, the test for the two uh, population proportions. But if you have more than two populations, okay, two, three, four or more, then, okay, you can do ANOVA. Provided the, the type of data that you have is interval and your experimental design is independent sample. So you have uh, you have interest in the parameter mu1, mu2 up to mu k. K is the number of group or the number of treatment that you have. And the most important formula, okay, the final formula in step 3 of hypothesis testing in the case of ANOVA is F ratio which is equal to MST over MSE. And what are the required conditions? You need to assume that your populations are normal and the population variance are equal. Basically, we have come to the end of uh, this chapter of ANOVA or analysis of variance. Okay, do, do not forget to practice okay, what you have learned today. Okay, look, uh, you need to do the calculations, okay, manual calculation in terms of how you came up with sum of square for treatments, sum of square for error. Okay, do check out the slide on the summary, okay, especially for the formula. And then you need to calculate the mean square for treatment, mean square for error. And then you need to take the ratio of MST over MSE in order for you to come up with your F statistics. So I start the discussion on ANOVA with this particular slide. So now I'm putting it on again for you okay, to look at okay, uh, sarcastically okay, about ANOVA analysis of value. So does it make sense now? Okay, so here we're talking about a uh, uh, cartoon from phdcomics.com uh, okay, which make a play of word into ANOVA and into hypothesis testing basically so you have the questions here is your research worth anything okay so it has some background in terms of who came up with this ANOVA or hypothesis testing which is uh, R.A. Fisher in 1912 okay and then you have the null hypothesis being replaced by dull hypothesis in this particular slide Okay, this one is just for example, okay, do not change, okay, uh, do not refer to null hypothesis as dull hypothesis after this. Okay, and then the test in, uh, involve computation of the F ratio, forget the apostrophe D, okay, it means something else, okay. Native uh, English speaker would know what uh, that means, okay, and then the possibility of making type 1 and type 2 error is the normal part of the hypothesis testing. So remember, ANOVA is just a continuation of what we did earlier in terms of hypothesis testing. You still need to have the five steps of hypothesis testing. Okay, your null hypothesis, your alternative hypothesis in the first part or the, in step one. And then you need to set your critical value depend upon, are we talking about large sample? Then you need to refer to your Z distributions. If you're talking about small sample, okay, 30 or less, then you need to look at the T uh, student T distribution. And if you're talking about ANOVA, okay, two or more population, then you need to look at your F distributions, okay? And then you need to make your decision whether to reject or fail to reject your null hypothesis. And then don't forget the last step that students always ignore in terms of uh, making your conclusion. What does it mean when you reject or you fail to reject hash node? Okay, this is why you need to relate, okay, your computation, okay, with what the question is asking for okay with that basically we've come to the end of part six okay and ANOVA or analysis of variations okay study smart that's all for today